What's up, party people? It's your boy Optimus Code. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to learn about resolution and image quality and the differences between them. So, if you stick around to the end of the video, you'll have a better understanding of why dev studios prefer to be judged off of final image quality. And, 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 as a gamer, you will see clearly why certain decisions are made during the game development process. Okay, so in the last video, we went over how computers draw images and text to the screen. Hey, also, if you missed that video, I'll link it in the description so you can check it out and get all caught up. Okay, so today though, we're going to build on the basic concepts from the last video to learn about resolution and image quality. Uh, I've seen a couple of people confuse these and get them mixed up. And today we're going to try to straighten out that confusion. And I will admit it is kind of a... Uh, it is easy to get them mixed up and get them confused, so I understand why people get tripped up over this, but hopefully today we can get that all cleared up. In order to demonstrate this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at some human art. Now remember, humans draw differently than computers, okay? But just for the sake of illustration only, we're gonna take a look at some human art that was created using a technique called stippling. Okay, now stippling is this method where humans draw an image using nothing but dots no lines so when they use only dots when a human being uses only dots what this does is it partially matches how a computer draws but of course not completely because as we all know as we learned in the last video computers always start at the top left assign a color to every pixel in the first row then it goes back to the left starts at the next row and does the same thing and it never stops doing this ever as long as your computer is turned on and your display device is going to do that forever, infinitely. It never stops, right? Okay. And another difference, like we brought up last time, is that humans can put the pencil or pen or whatever it is that they're drawing with, a human can put that in the exact spot that they want on the drawing surface. And again, computers cannot do that. Computers have to follow this same process. So what we're going to do is we're going to show some images that use a stippling and then we'll make the comparisons and then we'll explain what the resolution is and then what the image quality is. All right, let's rock. Okay, so here is our first example of an image drawn using the stippling technique. And as you can see, this image is drawn completely with dots. There are no lines in this image, even like here, this whisker where you would think this was a line. This is not a line. This whole thing was drawn using nothing but a series of dots. Okay. And if you notice here in these shaded areas, like here, more dots were used. They're closer together. They're much more concentrated. And if you look here, you can see there's a lighter uh, speckling of dots here, uh, here around the eyes. You can see there are more dots, more heavily concentrated. It takes a lot of dots grouped together to create this effect here. Also, if you look here, it's like medium uh, spread of dots, lighter. So you can see that they do shading by doing a higher or lower concentration of dots. And that brings us to our first concept, which is this notion of pixel size. It is important to communicate that in this uh, stippling drawing or like just dots, pixels in general, Every pixel is the exact same size. Every dot is the exact same size. There is no such thing as one dot being bigger than another dot. And that basically means that there's pixel uniformity. So every pixel or every dot in this case is exactly the same size. The next concept that this brings up is the notion of a pixel budget. And this is gonna be important. This is a big one. So like really pay attention to this. Pixel budget is simply the number of pixels that you have that you're allowed to use to make the image. Now, let's go ahead and do some examples of that. Okay, so let's just say that you're an artist and someone comes to you and they say, hey, we want you to do a stippling rendition of this photograph of these two girls. Now, you need to tell them if you can do it or not and how well you can do it. Okay, so what are the things that you're gonna consider? Well, one of the first things you have to consider is 
Okay, if I have to recreate this using only dots, is there a dot budget? How many dots am I allowed to use to create this image using the stippling technique? Because the number of dots that you can use will greatly determine how accurately you can recreate this. The more dots you can use, the better you can recreate it. The less dots you use, the less accurate your rendition will be. Also, you will need to know the size of each dot because if they tell you you can use 50 dots total, but 25 of those dots are three times as big as the other, then that gives you some options, right? Some flexibility to take up more space with one dot than another dot, okay? So if they tell you that you can use 50 dots and all of those dots must be the exact same size, now you understand what your pixel budget is and what the size of each pixel is. And now you can tell them, okay, I'm confident that I can recreate this using stippling. So let's just say that they tell you, you have 5,000 dots that you can use to make this image. And of course, all of the dots are the exact same size and they are the size of a pencil point. Okay, so this is the rendition that you deliver. If you notice, this is a stippling image. This whole thing was created using dots. No one cheated. This is not merely a copy of that image with dots sprinkled in. That is not the case. An artist went by and dot by dot, even in this hair, all of these are a series of dots, all of it. The eyes here, you can tell there's a much higher concentration of dots here to get that darker image. Same thing here, this is shaded much more deeply with the blacks, that means there are pixels, pixels, pixels here to give this uh, dark effect. Same thing here, you can see the shading gets a little bit lighter. Like here in this eyebrow, you can see it's not as uh, darkly shaded as this portion of this eyebrow. Less dots, more dots. Higher concentration of dots where the darker areas are, obviously. And so this image was able to be recreated using the stippling technique, okay? So one thing we can infer from this right away is that the more dots you have to work with, the more detailed you can make your rendition. More dots or more pixels makes it possible for you to create a clearer and cleaner image. It doesn't guarantee that you will, but it certainly makes it possible. So the more pixels, the better the image. That number of pixels is what we call resolution. Okay, so let's look at an example of this. So here is an image of a woman's face done using the stippling technique. Nothing but pixels here to create a rendition of this woman's face. This image was made using 1500 pixels. And you can see how the pixels are distributed to create the image. Here is that same face now using a pixel budget of 30,000. Or in other words, the resolution of this image is 30,000 pixels. And you can see the clear difference between a picture that was rendered with 30,000 pixels versus a picture that was rendered with 1,500 pixels, right? You can see there's like way more detail here. Here, look at the shading in the face, uh, across the lips, under the lips, the eyes, the shadow that's able to be captured here. By the way, when I say shading, shading just means uh, like shade in the sun, an area where there's not light, where there's darkness, just regular shade. So you can see the shading here on the face. So this image, oh, definitely here, the shadow behind the nose. So you can definitely see that the ability to use more pixels, a higher resolution, gives you also the ability to have more detail. Now, again, I said you can have more detail. Gotta be gotta be gotta be gotta be clear about that you can have more detail it doesn't necessarily mean that you will have more detail just that the potential for it is there higher resolution means the potential for a more detailed clearer image okay so here is that same image now by the same artist with the same 30,000 pixel budget so the same amount of resolution however you see the shading is lost and they decided instead to focus more pixels on the lines, creating sharper, clearer lines everywhere. So now 
where we had shading and shadow and different things before and it was like a gradual blending of pixels getting lighter to darker with the coloring instead they have chosen to make all very dark pixels and they have grouped them together in a way where they create a much bolder effect this is the same amount of pixels as this both of these are the same amount of pixels for some people they will say that this image is clearer other people will say that this image is better the point here is that you can use the same amount of pixels and you're not guaranteed to get a cleaner or a sharper or a prettier image. More pixels just gives you a higher budget. It gives the developer or whoever is working on the game, it gives them the ability to add more detail to an image, but not necessarily. Because again, both of these are the same number of pixels. This is the same image, just with the pixels distributed differently. Same resolution, same everything except for the distribution of pixels. So it is not true that a higher pixel count will guarantee you a sharper, clearer image. It's all gonna depend on the direction that the developers were aiming for with their art. Or in other words, it's gonna depend on the art direction. Okay, so this image has been done using the stippling technique and the artist was able to use eight million pixels. And you can see how everything is just very detailed. They have some pixel budget to spend even on the background here. Here is that same image. Six million, well, let's say seven million pixels. Now, can you spot the difference between these two? Um, go ahead and pause the video and look and see if you can spot the difference between these two images. And so one of the things that you will notice, which is another one of our concepts, is the more pixels you have, once you get up into the millions of pixels, the more that you have, the harder it is to tell the difference between a higher and a lower pixel count image. So when you have 1500 pixels to 30,000 pixels, that jump is massive. And you can see a clear difference between two images rendered with those pixel budgets. Okay, now there's one more thing that I wanna show and it has to do with the image quality. Here is another version of the image with seven million pixels. You can tell that the distribution of the pixels is a lot different than it was before. Many people think this is a higher quality image, even though it is less pixels. And the reason they think that is because the shading is more pronounced and more realistic. So the notion of image quality then, we need a definition for that. Image quality is the quality of each pixel and how those pixels combine together to produce a final image. Resolution is the number of pixels you get to use. Image quality is how good of a job did you do with the pixels that you were given. Okay, y'all know the routine. Quiz time. Okay, that's it. Time's up. Quiz over, pencils down. How did y'all do? Hopefully these questions weren't too hard. Hey, a lot of y'all have subscribed already and I really appreciate that, man. We really feeling the support already. We just getting started and y'all already showing us a lot of love and we appreciate it and we respect y'all for it. If you don't mind, hit the like button for this video. If you know someone that will benefit from the material that you're learning here, then by all means, please share it with that person so that they too can learn the things that you're learning. Okay, that's it. We'll see y'all next time. Peace.